me introduce you to Jarrell right here. Jarrell is a former NFL player. Um, he's been on a couple of my shoots, really great talent to work with. Um, he's a perfect subject for what we're doing today, lighting the human form. Um, right now we're starting on white. Um, and I just want to go through some of the very basics of shooting on white, um, which obviously first thing is lighting the background to white. Um, so the biggest mistake I see people make on this is they overlight the background. What I like, to, how I like to shoot it is white with detail. So I don't like to completely blow out the background and make it nuclear. Um, as long as I have white with, with um, you know, good edge detail, that'll ensure that the highlights aren't going to wrap around my subject and interfere with my, with my light on the subject. So just to recap that, right now I have eight and a half on the background as white, okay? What happens there is if, when I meter the light coming back on my subject, I get four. So that gives me two and a half stops of variance between the brightness of the background and subject. And for me, that means my edges are gonna be nice and crisp with not a lot of white contamination. So before we even talk about lighting Durrell, I just want to make sure we lit, light the background appropriately. We just don't throw up a bunch of lights and blast it because then we're going to have too much spill coming back towards the camera. It causes things like lack of contrast, um, softness in the image, flare. Um, if we don't want that, we want to make sure we have two-stop differential between the white of my background and our subject, okay? The light bouncing back onto our subject. So for me, that's kind of a baseline. I start, I call it white with detail. So my white's not some nuclear blast that's happening back there, but it's nice, clean white. Um, so that's where I, where I would start with him. Now I'm going to start worrying about lighting the human form, knowing that I have nothing uh, coming back, right? So if I took one shot, I'd have a nice, dark image. Um, let me put the trigger on. So I should have a nice... Full body dark image of Jarrell here. Let me just zoom out here. The screen capture. There we go. All right, so I have a nice clean silhouette of this perfect body. So now what I would do, what I'd like to do is like, let's just start with my main like, you know, go to light source, my top down, um, and let's heat that one up. Okay, Mark's going to heat it up for me with a with a little remote control. I'm going to reframe the camera. All right. Uh, Jarrell looks like a specimen. Yeah. All right. So what do you have that coming out at? Uh, that was eight to nine. Okay. All right. So I have, I have an 11 probably coming out. Pop it for me. So I, so I have 11 coming out of this light back you know, metering it back towards the light falling on his shoulders. Um, that, you know, and I'm shooting at, at 11, the background's um, almost at 11, it's eight, nine or near 11. Um, so I'm kind of at 11 even um, with, my, with my light. And if I'm gonna make this my key light, um, that's a pretty good place to start. So if we look at the screen, we're gonna have just like a nice intimidating, shoulder light coming down. I see on Jarrell's head's a little bit hot um, from the light. So at this point, I'd probably, Natalie would probably come in and just kind of buff that down a little bit. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, if we just put a little bit of powder on the top of his head, um, he's bald, so the light's reflecting off it pretty hard. Another thing I would do um, or could do commercially is I would maybe just back that light up a little bit. Or in this case, I can just move him forward just like a half step. Another half step. That'll decrease that sh that um, that'll decrease that skim off the top of his head, but still have nice highlights on his shoulders. So all of a sudden, I have my next shot where I still have the highlights. The skim's a little bit less. It's definitely um, still there. So we probably will want to take that down. Um, so that would be a base of where I would start. Now I would start to think like, okay. I got to light my subject in some way, um, you know, in order to start bringing out this form. So from here, I'd probably bring in one of the strips um, and I'd probably place it. Let's see where the branding is. 
Um, it's right in the middle, so it doesn't really matter. You know, you got to be conscious of your branding whenever you're lighting something because you don't want to throw your client's logo into shadow. Um, so the first thing I look for is like, which side is the branding on? Um, and then be conscious of how I light my subject from there. So let's bring in a strip light um, and we'll just set up a, just a simple cross lighting scenario uh, where I'm going to use one strip as a key and the other strip as an as a edge. Um, and that'll be a simple, a simple uh, cross light. So you, you, let's bring it right here. Let's put it right here. Sorry, come, sorry. come on up and bring it right in front of the, the, the um, yeah, there you go, perfect. All right. Okay, so this light um, is going to give us a long, skinny highlight, okay? Um, and I'm going to use that as my key. So remember I talked about earlier about defining light with shadow? Um, I'm going to use this backlight as my key light, meaning that's going to be the brightest, most powerful light in my whole scene. Um, that's going to be the light, uh, the, the light source. Someone used to always tell me that, that uh, you know, light is, there's only really one light source, the sun, you know, and it always comes from above. Uh, and that's the way our, our mind and our eyes used to, you know, processing light. Um, well, our mind's also used to processing one strongest light source. Um, and in photography, we call that the key. So this is going to become my strongest light source, uh, my most dominant light source of the image. And a lot of people light with their key up front. And I think that's the biggest mistake that young photographers make is they key light everything from the front and their images look really flat. But if you key light things from behind or from the side or from anywhere other than front on camera, you'll start just noticing your images have a lot more shape to them. Um, so in the human form is all about shape. So we want to create a lot of shadow, hence the key is behind the camera or behind the, the subject, um, creating shadow between the light and the camera. So I have light that's going to be raking down here. I'm going to have shadow and there's my camera. So highlight shadow point of view. Okay. What's that coming on us? Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Let me make sure I'm not contaminating. Okay. So um, that's coming out at eight right now. Um, can you turn off the top down and let me just see what that's doing? So I'm going to look at this light by itself um, just so that, that I'm not confused by the, top, by the power of the top down. Um, and then I can start to figure out my ratio. So that's typically how I start is I build the light between, you know, knowing I have this base, knowing that that's not going to move. Then I start adding sources, but I do still look at each individual source um, to see how it's contributing to my overall effect. And, you know, sometimes lights, um, you know, they, they jump in power settings or they, or they get really, um, you know, maybe they're not recycling fast enough, just things happen. So you always want to kind of build your light so you, you can make sure you know how each one is interacting with the other. Um, so right now, as I can see from my modeling light, I'm going to have a nice kind of glowing light coming back at them. Turn this way a little bit, Jarrell. Perfect. So if you look at it this way, I can see this, and the most important thing for young photographers is to understand and see how light is affecting with your eyes, not with your meter, not with your CCD, not with your computer screen, but to look at our subject, to like actually take a moment to look and see the light. Like right here, I can see this highlight all the way down his side. I know we have some other lights in here for the, for the video capture that's contributing, but it might be a good idea if I could just kill this light for a second, just so we could really see that light. And you guys will see this. It's really important that you, it's really important that you as a photographer learn to see light. Because if you can't see light, you might as well pick something else to do. Um, lighting is the most critical part of photography. That's obvious. Um, but it, all it takes is your eye to kind of look at it. All you have to do is see this really sharp edge and you can start to see his like pecs come out, his chest come out, or sorry, his abs come out. Um, you know, the definition is legs, the shape of the shirt. So if that's coming out at 11 right now, that's probably going to give me a decent starting point. So you're going to see like now I have a bright white background and a raking light that's across him. Okay, 
So now you can see all this shadow that's created towards camera, right? And so this shadow for me is where all the drama comes from. Um, looking at that, I'm probably um, eight towards camera or I'm eight and a half towards the light, but what am I towards camera? Go ahead, pop it. So that's only four um, or that's uh, uh, two eight. So let's turn that up two stops. So why I'm doing that is I'm seeing how is it, you know, towards the light. So I'm seeing how bright it is right here, but then I'm also seeing it as it's wrapping around and fading it off, how, how powerful it is. All right, that's five, six. All right, that'll, that'll be perfect. All right, so now I have a little bit more light, a little bit more wrapping to it. Okay, so that looks a little bit more on point. Now, if I take this other, um, if I take this other edge, where'd it go? <laughs> um, if I take this other edge and just bring it across to him, I could have a key and a fill. And so like sometimes you keep these opposite each other um, and you can create a really nice light and you can move them around um, and have them balance. And that's like a simple, you know, that right now there's two real lights, well, three, three real lights. Um, that could be a simple setup. And I just kind of move them around uh, opposing each other to give myself a bunch of different looks. So when we set this up, you'll start to see it come to fruition. Let's, let's just see what this looks like right here. I mean, I think the, mo the main thing, the takeaway here, is that you have to be able to see the light. Because if you can't see the light, then, then you're not going to, you know, no matter how much I teach you, you're not going to be able to feel it. You're not going to be able to do it for yourself. So you have to spend the time to kind of look at what your modeling lights are doing in relationship to your subject. So like right now, this light is going to kill all that nice shape that I have, right? Because I can see that this light right here is washing out all that other light, right? So what we need to do is change the power intensity of that, bring it down so that I still have nice shadow, um, and that this light's not flattening it out. So let's take a look at, um, you want to meter that? Let's see what that's coming in at. All right, go ahead. All right, so that's, that's eight. So, so that's balance between those two, right? Um, this is probably going to equally fill this other light. Look at me, Jarrell. Okay, so I'll have a shadow right down the middle of Jarrell. Take a look. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, my stylus is gone. So if I look at this, like you can see all that light that I just added flattening this character out. I still have that nice highlight from my key coming across the subject. Um, I still have this nice highlight and then this fill sort of flattens it out. Um, I'm not in love with, um, I'm not in love with, with that so far, and what I'm missing is that nice top-down shoulder light. So let's add that, Mark. You see how flat he looks up here and up here? So if we add that, third light will be in pretty good shape. All right, so you can now pump that up. Is the modeling light on? Just so we can see it. Okay, there it is. So now he's like fully illuminated. This one, in order to keep that one as the key, I might drop this one down a half a stop or maybe a stop just so that I can really start to feel that light raking and that this light truly becomes a fill. Now, if you don't have all these fancy lights, a lot of times what I'll use is, a, is just a bounce card to fill in this side of the body. Um, so do we have a white flat that we can pull up? So let's just look at that real quick. All right, so Jarrell looks like a beast right here in his pink, because pink is bad as in good. Um, so now you see like his shoulders are really well defined. You can compare these two images and see kind of the difference, like how flat that looks in here and how raised that up is in here. It's pretty nice. Um, you can turn the lights back on if you, if you want. 
So a lot of times what I'll do is rather than use another light as a fill is I'll just bring in a nice smooth white bounce card if I have enough space, if I can, like if, since this is just a portrait, I might bring this card in right here and that'll create just the smoothest of fill light as opposed to something that's like really specular and going to pick up all these little highlights, you know? So let's bring that in to show you what, like how awesome just a nice fill card can be. And people kind of overlook the simple things sometimes, especially younger, um, you know, guys who are just starting out. Can you put this on the other side so it's not in the frame? Things like this where this should be on the other side are helpful because I don't want to see that in the frame. There you go. And I, and I do a lot of this just because it's, it's, um, it's a much smoother light and it keeps my key really identifiable. Look at me, Jarrell. And then let's look and see how that needs to come back. All right, good. Yeah, look all the way down at the camera. Perfect. All right, so this is great. This is really important lesson to, to, to figure out. Um, is, that, is that when I compare these two, right, I have basically the same exposure value in here and in here. But by changing from a light to a fill card, look how much smoother this is with the light and this is with the fill card. Look how much smoother that highlight is. For me, what I like about that is that I'm not, I'm seeing the key is really defined, right? It's clearly that this is the, the lights coming from behind the subject, as opposed to here, my eyes kind of confused by the, that highlight. And for me, that's important because I always want to try to, you know, Keep the, keep the viewer's eye flowing from one direction, not sort of bouncing back and forth. I mean, that's, that's, that's different, but it's simple like that. Um, this is just a simple sort of, and why don't we back up a half a step and over this way, good. All right, so if I wanted to, to you know, shoot his form right here, you can see how well this light defines him. He's really, really dark. So I might open up a half a stop just to kind of bring it down half a stop from meter. Bring your head like this, Jarrell. Too much? Yeah, perfect. Just like that. Yeah, good. Good. And now you can move and square up. Right there. Good. Just like that. So for me, um, this is just a very simple directional, side directional key. Let me take this crop off. And that might be a place where I actually start. All right, so, so I've gotten a base, right? I've gotten a simple base, but now I wanna, I wanna you know, kind of use my light to create something. Um, and so I'll look at the subject, kind of say, okay, um, back up a half a step. And this is where I kind of throw the base out the window and I start crafting. I'll move the subject off point. I, I know where I am as a baseline. Um, and now I'll start to move the subject around. I might bring in another light. Um, I might uh, twist it up as I start to get sort of inspired with, with this subject and what, what I'm trying to accomplish. So if I'm just going, let's just say portrait right now. What I see right here in him is I see like this beautiful darkness with this vibrant pink. So I almost kind of feel like there's a silhouette game that I want to play with this. Um, something where it's low key and high key, high key on the background, but like low key on the subject. Um, so let me take a look at, at using that color just to drive the picture. All right, so let's see, that's where I am there. Let me think about this. Um, bring this guy in here, Mark. Right there, right there, back it up even more. Over in, okay, come on. Right, right there, good. All right, so hop back on there, Jarrell. All right, so, yeah, all right. So like, um, let's even those out a little bit. Bring them in a little closer. All right, so back up, back up, back up. All right, good, all right, good. No, that's good, that's good, that's good. Now keep them, yeah, right there. All right, so th this, this like sort of double edge Top down, three light setup is kind of like a pretty much a standard. Everybody sort of has played this around. 
Um, I don't do a lot of this anymore, but I'm just going to kind of kind of wrap through this really quickly. Um, just to kind of show you these hard edge lights and what they do. Um, what I might do to something like this is then just bring a V flap back out, capture some of that light, turn this way for me. Perfect. I might just capture some of that light right there, bring it back around. Look right there. Good. And I might walk this guy in pull that back a little bit and I'll come shoot right next to it look down at me okay now that would be just your basic standard heroic double lit and you can see how nicely that fill card does on his skin um, by without introducing another light. I have a nice, simple, heroic portrait. His whole entire body is, is, is well formed. You see like all the detail, all the muscles. Um, these edge lights are nice and, uh, and bright. Is one of the um, things got a yellow in there? I, I, I'm, in, I'm seeing a little more yellow in the highlight than here, so I'm wondering. Um, a lot of times, your, a lot of times, I can see right there. One has a baffle and doesn't, or yeah. one has a baffle and one doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So one of my lights had the baffle in it and one didn't. So I, you can see right here, I have like, a, you know, just that subtlety. I have a white highlight and a yellow highlight. So what's going on there is is very. Um, you know, a, a different color. So I want to make sure they match. That's simple. Something that, you know, I would probably see on set, but something we want to be a little more careful when we're working and setting up lights. Um, just that we keep our light sources consistent, you know, um, and even if we're going to use them like that. Um, so let's reshoot that. Where's the camera? Thanks. Terrell looks like a total BA. All right, ready? Chin down a little bit. Nice, nice intense. I'm wearing pink portrait. There you go. Good. Now I'll come down in here. Good. Cross your arms. Uh, put them on your hips, maybe. Good. Look that way. Like that. Good. Hold on one second. All right, now, that's better. That light is a little bit hotter now because we don't have the baffle. Um, so we probably dropped that down in intensity, but it's still the brightest light in the scene. Um, and that's a pretty heroic, nice, tight portrait of a man wearing pink. All right, good. So let's just play around with that. Um, Brian, just feather that light in the background away. Just that one. Just feather. No, no, this guy, the strip. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I, what, what I want to do sometimes when I'm working with light is I won't be super rigid in it, is I'll start like just modifying it. So right now I just had him feather it away. Um, and I just want to see how that's going to change my overall look. And I find that like, I find that like if I just stay with like a standard lighting kind of setup, I kind of like am not as inspired as if I start like just kind of modifying it and moving the subject around through the light so that I can I can kind of shape it differently and then I kind of find myself getting more inspired with what I'm seeing and then I'll end up at a different place than I started. So right now like I didn't I don't really like that double edged, you know, double strip light look. Like I want to I want to keep some of the goodness of it, but I want to change it around so that I can make it my own. I can have it look a little bit differently. I still like this really nice light that's coming off of the, the, um, this big soft strip on his pink shirt against his black skin. So I want to play around with that and just kind of work that in. All right. Now it would be great. Let's, let's get him, let's get him moving. Right. If I wanted to, if I wanted to make him move, Really nice. I might want to underexpose that too. OK. 
Okay. I'm dropping it down even more just so that I can see that shirt start to come out. All right, now just kind of bring back that edge light just a little bit. Right there. Okay. So now that that's going to kiss off of there and be really quite nice. Yeah, and bring it in just a little bit more. All right, there you go, good. All right, look at me. Okay, that's pretty nicely balanced. So let's look at that. That's really nice. Okay, um, so this is just a nice, like the shirt looks really good. The lighting on him is, is is interesting. I have like a strong key. I like the darkness of his skin, so I want to take that like really kind of dark so that the, the, the shirt really stands out. You have like really good light and form on him. Um, all my detail is there. There's no like crazy highlights blown out. Um, for me, I'd rather be, I'd rather be here than here because I find sometimes these highlights are too distracting. I'd probably increase my exposure a little bit with this awesome rad camera to somewhere like there and be in a, be in a nice place for well-formed out light. Now, what's happening in there, we need to expand upon, but just as a basic light, um, that's, your, that's your standard setup. Let's pick out a move here. So, um, see here I had some things on the desktop here uh, these are all chicks but um, just almost like something like this yeah, you know what like I mean this. something like that so just show off like you know you're just kind of like you track warming up or something like, hold it or you just... no no I'll capture it yeah I'll capture it in the moment okay. um, so we'll let, so show me how you're perfect yeah perfect okay good good and and when you do that, don't have your fingers so. I noticed that on your on your um, okay. on Bridgestone shoot, your fingers are so tight like that. Right. You know, just kind of relax them a little bit. Right. You know, just kind of you know so that they're not the focus. You know. Right. All right. So here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to have this Ferrari be a Ferrari. I'm going to have him move a bit, right? Um, and this is where this light will really look nice. He's going to to do a sort of like a track warm up shot. You know, where he's bouncing around. Um, and this will this will really help us kind of see how this light's effective. Um, Brian, just bring this around a little bit. I'm going to move the right light around a little bit to give him a little more space to work. Um, obviously, in doing that, I'll probably turn it up, but come over here a little bit. Now, this is where you're really going to see these uh, Einsteins outperform anything else on the market. And and the guys from Broncolor right now are scoffing, but I'd be happy to do a demo with them. Um, back, th back that up. These things have the best flash duration um, and recycle time comparatively compared to anything else that's on the ma market. And flash duration is like how you capture action crisply. So what is my power setting on that? Uh, yeah, so, so I like to be between a half and a quarter power on my power settings be because that gives me the fastest flash duration and that's going to make sure that these things are as sharp as possible. The, 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 uh, right around a quarter power on these Einsteins is, is the sweet spot on flash duration. Um, and that means like it's, I capture the action the fastest. I think it's right around eight thousandths of a second at quarter power, which is incredibly efficient um, compared to, to some of the other brands that are out there. Um, what's that one at? All right, so, so, all right, so let, let, me, let, me, let me talk to you about flash duration. Okay, the basic simple point about flash duration is how long the flash is actually on, right? Think about it that way, right? The longer that flash is on, the more blur you're going to have in your subject because that light is going over a period of time, and during that period of time, your subject's moving from point A to point B. Like, there, that's not the exact definition of it, but let's use that as the, as the non-physics guy interpretation of it. The longer the flash duration, 
the more blurry your subject's going to be because they're moving from point A to B as they're exercising, right? So the shorter the flash duration means it's a more instantaneous burst of light. And for action photographers, we like a very short flash duration. The shorter, the better. The faster, the better. And it's measured in thousandths of a second. So for example, I think, don't quote me, and I'll probably get a thousand emails, um, but I think that these at a quarter power have about one eight thousandths of a second flash duration, which is incredibly high for, or incredibly short timeline for um, the power. I think when you talk about Profoto um, and Bronze Color, yeah, they can reach eight thousandths of a second, but at a much, much, much lower power output. So I think score packs are like um, eight thousandths of a second at one thirty second of a power, where I can get quarter power, 240 watt seconds or whatever out of these lights. Um, so I get a much higher power output for that short flash duration. So long story short, I'm going to get a very short burst of light that's going to capture the action without any blur on it at all. Um, and that's why I like these lights. Um, so let me uh, grab a thing. All right. So Go ahead and draw. So when I work with, with somebody, I want to I want to practice first. So go ahead and let me see what you're going to do. Okay. All right. Now let's let's go a little bit more uh, explosive. So like, there you go. Good. Good. All right. Let's do that right on the mark. So right here, come over this way, just a hair. No, sorry. Right there. Right there. Good. Perfect. Good. Let's make sure that that guy gives me some kick into there. All right. Go ahead. And let me see. All right, good. So I'm going to get him in full, full um, jump. And yeah, keep that. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. For me, I like it when he's, when I, I see what's called his legs in front. So I'm not shooting him open. I'm shooting him closed. If you can see him, all right, stop for a second. Go lay, low, uh, raise this leg here. All right, so that's closed because I'm not looking, you know, right up his crotch. And this would be open. Go show me open. I don't want to do that. Like that's that's not good body form. That's show, showing me something that people probably don't want to see. Um, so I'm going to come over here and just line it up. I'm going to pre-focus because this is a beast. It doesn't autofocus um, or it doesn't track focus. And go ahead. All right. Good. All right. Hold. So the, the medium format camera system compared to like the Nikon, um, I don't recommend shooting action with it because it's very slow um, from trigger to shutter. So on the Nikon, it's more like an instantaneous burst, um, meaning not a burst, but as soon as I press it, it triggers. But here with this camera, you see that how slow it was from when I press the shutter. So it's hard to shoot action with it. So you really have to time it a lot better. Um, just an FYI, so most people will probably use a 35mm um, a digital, which is probably the better tool for this. Move it in this way a little bit, this way, come this way a little bit more. Perfect, right there. All right, hold on one second. But I've been doing this so long that I'm just going to time it. I know how to time it. Go ahead. Good. All right, perfect. That's excellent. Hold. All right, good. I'm like cropping from the... So I have the crops tool still on here. There you go, good. So that's pretty good movement. Um, let's crop this down a little bit more. Perfect. So, okay. So um, let's get the camera on a tripod real quick. Okay, so I've done like your basic I've done your basic, like, you know, straight up um, heroic portrait, let's say. It's a very basic setup. Um, it's not like overly crafted, but it's, it's a standard. We've seen it. Um, you, you guys can all do it with, with three simple lights and a bounce card. And you have a very nice, um, clean look on an athlete. So if I now, like, here's, here's where I would go in, in the real world. I'd probably shoot this um, and craft it a bit harder and work a bit longer, um, maybe uh, you know, a half an hour getting some right posing, some right direction. Um, but then I'm about to move on to my next setup. So before I do that, 
I'm going to try something that I have everything, I've, saw, I've seen something, and I want to try something different, something new, um, something that may make my client go like, well, that's kind of cool. Like, hey, let's explore that a little bit more. So what I'm going to do right here, because I have all these hot lights for the video up, um, I'm going to explore what it looks like for me to, to drag the shutter and create a little bit of movement in this image um, so that I have like a sense of drama that my client or people might not expect to see. So first what I'm going to do, uh, Mark, will you turn down my modeling lights or turn off my modeling lights in the background? Stand on the mark. Turn this way. There you go. Good. Come over this way a little bit more. Right there. Good. There, good. Hold on one second. No. Stay as still as you possibly can. So what I did there is is I moved the camera, and so I'll have a strobe and some movement to our subject. So go ahead, stand in there for a second. And the reason I turned the background lights off is because I didn't want so much light bleeding on to the background and making it completely white. But here I have this little bit of movement to the image that kind of looks cool. And with that pink and the, and the, the um, bring your hands up onto your hips and those lines on the side of his pants, turn this way a little bit. Good, look back at me. All right, good. I'm gonna just drag across him just really quickly. Let's go, let's see if I go. Hey Mark, can you move back my fill card please? Just move it that way. Good. So what I'm going to do is take this off of here so I can move. And rather than have him move, I'm going to move the camera as I do this. I'm putting it on a two second exposure and I'm going to slowly move the camera and see if I can get something that's kind of interesting out of it. And see what kind of, and see what kind of color movement blur that I get. That's kind of cool. All right, so now again, this might be something that might not work at all, but I think that um, those are the types of like taking five minutes or two minutes in a shoot is well worth it if you're going to push the sort of the envelope. A little bit. Um, I see a couple things that aren't working in this technique, um, mostly because the background's so bright. So I might save this for a, for when we shoot on black, so I don't have the the background lights are are washing out all my effect. Can we turn those down real quick? I got them right there. I got them. I got them. Oh, because you're doing it. Oh, because you have them on yours? Okay. Just turn them down all the way. All right, so let me go in here with that. Just the modeling lamp? Yeah. All right, ready? No, 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 no. Leave the modeling lights up. Turn down the, turn down, turn the strobes off in the background. Right, so there's no background strobes. All right, look at me. All right, good. All right. Oh, that's cool. All right, that's that's getting cool. All right, I can do that. Ready? Watch if I do. If I pull in, if I shoot and push in, it gets bigger. If I pull out, it's it smaller. So, now it looks like his head's vibrating. It'd be pretty rad. Yeah. So now he looks like he's a man in movement. Here, let's do that again. That's pretty rad. How come these lights came back on? 
Look this way. Right there, good. All right, now, ready? When, I, when it flashes, I want you to turn and look at that light. Like, so let's practice that. So turn and look, yeah. So do just like that. So right when it flashes, but stay still otherwise. Ready? Go. Good. All right, so now I'm going to have them looking both ways. Right? So now I've created something that, like, wildly different, right? And I think if I explored that one more, I think I could get something red. So I'm going to start here. And now turn and look the other way. Let me see. All right, so i got to go from here. Look back. From here to there. All right. Look at me for a second. Right there. Bring your head this way. Right there. Good. All right, now you're going to turn when I say, ready? Turn. All right, that could be cool. Cool. So now let's stop there and move on to something a little bit more advanced. But now I've created something different. Maybe the client didn't expect to see that. Um, and maybe the client's inspired by that. And maybe the client says, hey, next time let's do something like that, or let me sell that to the client. And it just, it's taking an opportunity and pushing it a little bit further. That's all. Just going to say like, hey, it took two seconds to go 180 degree different direction, um, but it's worth taking that little bit extra time just to explore something if you're inspired to do it. So I've walked you through um, shooting on white, some of the basics of it. First, don't have the background too white because you don't want flare coming around and, and destroying your highlight or contaminating your subject. Um, I've walked you through a, a, a three light on subject simple portrait setup where I've had two big strips and a top down light. That's a very classic athlete portraiture, hero portraiture. I've shown you a reverse key, which um, meaning having your key behind the subject um, and using a secondary source to fill. Um, and, and then I've showed you also kind of taking that simple scene clean setup and trying to get something extra out of it. Um, now I'm going to move on to a completely different look, a completely different setup and uh, something a little bit more dynamic and with a little bit more action.